Locked On Kings has made it to San Francisco. Kings, Warriors, game three from Chase Center is tomorrow. But some Warriors fans might not make it that far. The meltdown is extreme. The Kings being up 2-0 on the defending champs has people losing their minds. Draymond Green has been suspended. De'Aaron Fox wins Clutch Player of the Year. Mike Brown wins Coach of the Year. And you are listening to Locked On Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all postseason long. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use cro- promo code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports reporter and producer for ABC 10 News. My partner, Kevin John, and I made the drive down here uh, to San Francisco. We're staying in a hotel right across the street from Oracle Park, so I have one hell of a view uh, of the uh, the Giants ballpark. And I know some of you Kings fans are also Giants fans, like, of course, uh, Logan Webb, San Francisco Giants starting pitcher, uh, is a diehard Kings fan. So we're in Giants territory right now, this close to Oracle Park. Of course, Chase uh, Center is just about four or five or so blocks uh, away from Oracle Park. Tomorrow, of course, we will be there for game three. But on the drive down here, myself and my partner, Kevin John, decided to record a podcast and just discuss Everything that's been going on today and all of the meltdowns happening, not just from Warriors fans and Warriors media members, but national media members uh, on social media, on talk shows, on TV and things like that. We're going to get into uh, a lot of it, and I know you're going to want to react to some of it, uh, so you absolutely can do so at any time. You can reach me on Twitter at MattGeorgeSack. You can email me MattGeorgeSports at gmail.com, or you can leave your thoughts in the YouTube comment section down below. But first... Uh, we do want to say congratulations, of course, to De'Aaron Fox, the Clutch Player of the Year, even though that award was a, a foregone conclusion with how good De'Aaron Fox was, how much better he was than everybody uh, in the Clutch. It's an it's excellent to see him actually win it. It's excellent to see him get that hardware. Uh, so congratulations to De'Aaron Fox. Uh, I, I put it out on social media, but I'll just reiterate it here uh, on Locked on Kings. Being able to witness and watch every single game this season and and, and watch him evolve into just this extremely confident clutch dynamic fourth quarter scorer uh, who just was absolutely fearless could get wherever he wanted on the floor ended up knocking down a vast majority of his shots to where everything he put up uh, you thought was going in it's just been an absolute pleasure to be able to uh, watch that and cover that from my position this year And then Mike Brown winning coach of the year, another award that we thought was pretty obvious. He becomes the first ever to unanimously win the award just goes to show how much respect he got uh, from the rest of the league for uh, what he was able to do here in Sacramento. Look, I think there are 12 other head coaches, 11 or 12 head coaches in between himself and Rick Adelman that have not been able to do this. It's been a culture of just losing and suck and terrible for so long. And Mike Brown came in and within a couple of months really changed that culture from day one. He was preaching accountability. He was preaching everybody buying in togetherness. He uh, and his coaching staff quickly won over that locker room, got them to buy in and trust him so much so that they could take his criticisms. They could take his coaching uh, and, and, and want to implement those changes into their own games to not just please him, but to, to make themselves uh, as good as they could possibly be and help this Kings team win. Mike has done just an absolutely phenomenal job. He'll take no credit for himself and give it to everybody else. So it's up to people like myself and Kings fans and everybody else uh, to do the bragging for Mike Brown. He's been just absolutely phenomenal. Also just an amazing human being. So congratulations coach Brown uh, on winning a, a very, very, very well-deserved coach of the year award. Now here is uh, you're going to come in the car with me uh, in the past on my way to San Francisco, myself and my partner, Kevin, John talking about all the meltdowns that that have been happening uh, over the last 24 hours or so on social media in the buildup to game three tomorrow night. On our way to San Francisco here in the car, going down 80 games, three and four. In the Bay, Matt George, Kevin John, my partner from ABC 10. And Kevin, 
while we're driving down, we still have another less than 24 hours, or roughly 24 hours, uh, before Game 3 happens. I'm very curious to see what happens over those 24 hours, considering the Kings being good, the Kings being up 2-0 in the playoffs, has not just Warrior fans melting down, not just Warrior media members melting down, there are national media members that don't know how to take the Kings being up 2-0. It's been a wild day in terms of storylines and excuses. And where do you think this comes from? Do you think this is just a, like everybody just trying to connect the dots and figure things out? Or do you think there's like the Warriors are setting themselves up to have excuses to lose the series? Like, what do you think is is, is coming of all this? Well, first of all, you got to look at it like this. As we both, as we both know, most sports pundits, experts, analysts, media members, they hate being wrong. Remember that. Most of them hate being wrong. And remember when this series first came about. Before, Actually, let's talk about, let's go back before the uh, top eight seeds were locked in. How there was all this talk around among national media on how everyone was gunning for that sixth spot. Whether it was the Warriors gunning for the sixth spot. Whether it was the Clippers. Whether it was the Lakers. Everyone wanted the sixth spot because they thought having a first-round matchup against the Sacramento Kings would be easy for them. Better yet, let's not even talk about the defending champs earning that sixth spot. But the problem, Matt, that we're seeing right now is that all of these national media members who felt that whoever got the sixth spot, it would be an easy walkover over this inexperienced Kings team who's been on a 16-season playoff drought, they all felt that the Kings would be an easy opponent. So now that the defending champion go to say Warriors are the sixth spot, some are saying, and I heard this before the series started, Matt, that people were saying that that may be the most strongest sixth seed ever in the history of the Western Conference and the Golden State Warriors. And the Kings may be the weakest third seed that we've seen in the last couple of decades. And the reason I brought up all of that, Matt, to preface what I'm about to say, is that people hate being wrong. Now, Matt, we see that the Kings are up two games to none against the defending champion, go to say Warriors, the one who a lot of media members didn't give a chance to. Remember that remember coming into the series, Matt? What uh how the Warriors were favored in this series, how the Kings were underdogs, the point spread and all that other stuff. And you know what? We're watching all of them eat their words right now. Well, you hear so many people talk about the regular season doesn't matter, the regular season doesn't matter, the playoffs, it's it's a different game, it's different basketball. But in reality, what's playing out right now is what the regular season showed us. The Sacramento Kings are a better basketball team. And they've been straight better than the Golden State Warriors in these two games. And I have even, even admitted being wrong to some extent. Like the Sacramento Kings have beaten the Golden State Warriors more with defense than with offense to this point, which I never predicted possible coming into this series. But it, it goes beyond just these guys being wrong. Now it's to a point where... I mean, we're just getting into lunacy. Like, J.J. Redick, for example, today. I'm looking forward to J.J. Redick's second apology to the city of Sacramento in the last handful of months. Because here's J.J. Redick all of a sudden spinning this narrative that the Sacramento Kings are only winning these games because they're being officiated (laughs) way differently than the Warriors. Or that the the Kings' whistle is so uh, ridiculously in their favor and so against the Golden State Warriors that it's borderline conspiracy theories at, at this point. And to me, this is just absurd, and I don't know how anybody could say this with any bit of logic, considering, one, if you look at the markets, why in the hell would the NBA want the Sacramento Kings over the Golden State Warriors to advance to the next round? Especially if there's a good chance that it's going to be the Los Angeles Lakers Ooh, that are waiting Steph. for You don't think the NBA wants the Lakers versus the Golden State Warriors in a playoff series? Just, <laughs> just for the drama and the ratings alone? It's absurd. It's ridiculous. Plus, if you look at both these games... I'll tell you, I think the Sacramento Kings maybe have gotten the the majority of calls or the whistle has been in their favor slightly. However, it's been pretty even if you look at the free throw attempts, if you look at the calls down the stretch. There are bad calls against both teams over the stretch. There have been bad or good calls for both teams in both of these games. I think we're just getting into Looneyville at this point with some of the things that people are saying. Well, I want to go back to one of the first comments you made on the regular season, how the regular season uh, and the postseason are two different beasts and storms. Well, you know, Matt, it's funny. The Warriors on the road during the regular season were 11-30. and Atrocious. The Warriors so far on the road in this playoff series are 0-2. And I'll be the first to say, Matt, 
I was one of those individuals who thought that, first of all, the Warriors' experience would be tremendously better in the postseason. Oh, we all did. And talked about, oh, their postseason. We saw what happened to them last year. They got hot in the postseason. So I'll be the first to say that. I was also on record to say, well, you know, their road record, that doesn't matter in this postseason because they're just coming 80 miles to Sacramento and they have a lot of fans in Sacramento. So it's really just kind of like a extended home game away with just more Kings fans. I was completely wrong with that as well. As we both saw in a game one and game two, there were a considerable amount more of Kings fans than Warriors fans. They drastically overweight them. So I want to say that first of all, in regard to the regular season postseason thing is that clearly it's bleeding over. Another thing you got to realize too, this Warriors team, even though they're the sixth seed, they had all the pressure on them coming into the series. The Kings had no pressure. They're the underdogs. No one even expected the Kings to be a third seed better yet in the playoffs this year. So they have exceeded everyone's expectations, which means what? When there's no pressure on you, when no one's expecting you to come out and, as Malik Monk would say, punch them in the mouth, it's easier for you because you have the benefit of knowing, well, we have nothing to lose. The Golden State Warriors, the fitting champs, have everything to lose. The Kings have zero to lose. I shouldn't say zero, but the Kings, the Snakes, are not nearly as high as they are with the Warriors. And then the other point that she talked about as far as the defense. We know, Matt, that both of these teams can score the basketball. They have the top two offenses in the league during the regular season. And as the Kings, they had the historically best offensive uh, efficiency throughout the regular season. So, Matt, we know both of these teams can score the basketball. I think I said it on your Lockdown podcast uh, about a week ago or two weeks ago that, and I was in probably in the minority saying this, but that Mike Brown needs to be held accountable for his defense ho- heading into this postseason. And if you're going to put up those points, you've got to play good defense, especially against the Golden State Warriors. And Mike Brown has did that. He has done that. He has brought that defensive intensity. And I think also coaching them for six years, he's had a little bit of an edge knowing what they're going to run, their adjustments that they make. But yes, it's been a great defensive battle, Matt. And I've been you know, especially with what happened with Draymond last game, this is turning into a rivalry series. I think the hypocrisy is what's really getting to me with the discussions around this series right now. Because everyone's saying, hey, basketball or playoff basketball, there's a different level of, of physicality the Kings aren't <laughs> prepared for. Well, now the narrative is, oh, the Kings are playing too physical and now they're getting they're they're playing dirty. They're playing it's just the, the goalposts just consistently change with this team to where the Kings are doing what they've been doing all year long, which is proving people wrong. They they get off to a good start. Oh, it's not going to last. It lasts. It gets the all-star break. Oh, they're, they're going to slow down now that these teams have made these adjustments in the playoff race. They make it through that. Oh, they're not going to make it past the Golden State Warriors. The physicality is different. Now the Kings are playing too physical. For God's sakes, the narrative coming out of Golden State right now is – DeMondis Sabonis is the dirty player and that uses the basketball as a weapon. What kind of nonsense is this that, that, I mean, look, this is what we're talking about. The guy who got stomped in the chest on the floor, he's the one being made out to be the villain by the media and by members of the Golden State Warriors, because allegedly that's where this report is coming out of, the Golden State Warriors organization being frustrated and upset and thinking DeMondis Sabonis is somehow using the ball as a weapon, which is just unbelievably dumb uh, to say. But but here we are. It's the guy who was stomped who's being made out to be the villain, not the guy who actually stomped him who is now serving a one-game suspension. And it hasn't surprised me necessarily that, that Warriors fans have gone to defend Draymond to extreme lengths because that's what they've done his entire career. This man has been enabled his entire career to where his antics of kicking people in the groin or pulling people down into gator rolls by the ankle and by the legs, which is what Draymond is saying, Demontis Sabonis was doing to him, stomping people, punching his own freaking teammate. Like, this is who Draymond is, who he's been, and he's been enabled by this organization because they've won championships for so long. Like, it's absolutely absurd to me that these are the narratives today. And to me, I don't I don't get angry at it. I just laugh at it, Kevin, because this is what the Kings have gotten this the Warriors to this state. The Sacramento Kings have gotten the defending champs down 0-2 for the first time in the Steph Clay Draymond era. And it's gotten to this fan base and to this team and organization and the media around them so bad that they're melting down with these conspiracy theories and narratives that are just so far out of left field. It's it's funny at this point. You know, it, it is. And, and part of the reason you referenced it, this is uncharted territory 
for the Warriors. And uncharted in the sense that they've never fallen down 0-2 throughout this whole dynasty era. The last time was in 07, the We Believe team. So they, they don't know how to act. And it's almost like if you're a boxer, you're a fighter, you're in the ring, and you start getting beat up. You're against the ropes. You're getting beat up. And in your mind, you know, there's no way out of hell I'm going to win this fight. I know I'm down and out. So instead of just taking my whooping like a grown A man, I'm going to either do something to disqualify me from this belt or do something illegal to where they just, you know, it's an automatic DQ or, 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 or DQ. So therefore I could just say, oh, well, you know, they were playing unfair or they were doing this unfair or something happened because you can't take your A whooping like a grown man. And that goes out to not just the Warriors, but obviously the fan base who is endorsing, encouraging, enabling, and supporting this kind of reprehensible behavior. Now, with Draymond Green, we all know the man has a reputation that precedes him. And I don't think there's anyone in the NBA outside of Dylan, Blo Dylan Brooks who embraces the villain role and loves to be the antagonist more than Draymond Green. And it's actually worked for them at times. You kind of need, and I even said, you know, I had a lot of people coming hard at me on my uh, Facebook page because of, of what happened, saying, well, you know, if, if Demonis didn't choke on him, if he didn't do all this other stuff, whatever. But the fact that I'm trying to say is that you, you need an emotional leader who's going to take stuff like that. However, Matt, and this is what I've been telling a lot of these Warriors, you know, uh, hardcore fans, is that I love, there's no one... Matt, who loves competition, especially in the postseason, more than me. I love two teams going at it. I love the emotional battle. I love the physical battle on the court. I love that. That's what playoff basketball is all about. But when you are stomping on the chest of somebody, which can cause internal injuries, whether it's your lungs, whether it's your uh, your ribs, whether you're, you're obviously he was diagnosed with a, what, a sternum contusion. When you're taking it to that level, then that's a little bit too far. And while I love physicality, when you're intent is to hurt somebody and jump on them that's taking it too far that's not even comp comp competing anymore that's just being an a-hole and that leads to another conspiracy theory that joe dumars who is in charge of handing out these these uh, suspensions joe dumars because he was a former sacramento kings employee he's in cahoots with the kings so this is why that uh, Joe Dumars made this decision because he's in coup. These are people that are completely brain dead because if you remember or understand how the Joe Dumars era went in Sacramento, the reason why he left is because he wanted more power that the Kings did not give to him. He essentially wanted to oversee Monty McNair. He wanted to be the guy in charge without being the general manager. That's, the Kings did not give him that. That is why he left for a better job. So he did not leave in Sacramento with the best of terms to where I'm going to go to the league office and put myself in a position where I can be in cahoots with this organization and help my pal Vivek and help my pal Monty get this Sacramento Kings team past the defending champions. It's just absurdity. It's grasping at straws. And what's hilarious is it doesn't just come from the emotional Golden State Warrior fans who, I don't know if you're comfortable saying this, I'll, I'll feel happy saying it on my own. This Golden State Warriors fan base, at least the vocal majority of them on social media, have shown their ass to be just completely whiny, entitled fans where they think everything should go their way just because that's how it's been over the last few years. That's not the case at all. And these conspiracy theories that they've whipped up as to why the league hates the Golden State Warriors is just silly considering the Sacramento Kings are the team that they're playing. If they're playing the Los Angeles Lakers or something, maybe they'd have a little bit of a, a ground to stand on, but even that, it would be loose. Against the Sacramento Kings, you just are a moron. Like, there's no way uh, other way to put it. But this idea to suggest that Joe Dumars is in cahoots, the league is in cahoots with the Kings with this Draymond Green suspension, just like the officials are in cahoots with the Kings with how they're calling these games. I mean, it, it, like I've said earlier, it just goes beyond the path, uh, the, the realm of logical thinking. We're just in lunacy and to a point where Warrior fans and Warriors media and everybody, even non-Warrior fans who are just trying to make sense of this situation, can't comprehend or wrap their brain around the fact that the Sacramento Kings are a good basketball team. Why? Because they haven't watched the Kings all year, and now that they're seeing the Kings and how good the Kings are, they just cannot accept it because that's not what the Kings have been for the last 16, 17 years, and they can't handle that change. Well, you know, first of all, your descriptions and superlatives to describe the Warriors hardcore fan base 
Um, I, I'm not going to uh, double down on those. Let, let me let yeah, me say but, this. But, I'm uh, not saying the hardcore fans necessarily. There are a lot. I have, I have friends that are Warrior fans that don't like that Draymond suspended. They don't like that they're down 0-2, but they're not making up these ridiculous conspiracy theories, tinfoil okay. hats. Like, we're going to San Francisco right now. I guarantee you I can walk into a Target at San Francisco, and the tinfoil aisle will be empty because everybody in San Francisco is apparently wearing tinfoil hats. So I'm not saying diehard Warrior fans are necessarily pro- I'm saying some of the vocal, vocal extreme fans on social media right now, for clarification. Okay, okay, good. No, 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 because obviously I've seen some of them on Twitter. Anyone who's been on social media since the series starts, uh, has started, knows exactly what Matt's talking about. In regards to what you said about Joe Dumars, yes, it's not like Joe Dumars and Mighty McNair and Vivek and, uh, you know, all of the Kings front office are like best of friends and they have slumber parties at each other's homes every day and all that other stuff, you know, if they do, that's unbeknownst to me. But also you got to look at the thing I like about what Joe Dumars did was he didn't just hand down the suspension. He clearly justified why yep. it was a one game suspension yep. and he did it several times. He said it wasn't just this. They took into account his past unsportsmanlike conduct. Yep. So everything that, what does that mean? Everything that Draymond does, that everything that Draymond has done um, leading up to this point, uh, kicking people in the groin, um, everything that he, this guy's done, I can't, you know, um, choke Kobe, uh, uh, choke Cody people, uh, everything that Draymond has done, we've seen this. They, they have compilation videos, yep. literally, of all the negative um, you know, I've seen stuff Draymond has done on the basketball court. In just the playoffs. Too. Yes, in just the playoffs. He literally has highlight reels on all of that. So I'm saying that to say that Joe Dumars was extremely uh, uh, descriptive and justified, not just in his um, in the press report that the NBA put out, but he was on NBA Today this morning, in addition to other networks, where he clearly illustrated why they took into account. And another thing that he did as well, and I want to make sure I say this, is not just the fact of what Draymond did stomping on uh, uh, um, Sabonis' chest. It wasn't just the fact that Draymond is a repeat offender, a repeat, 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 repeat offender. It's a simple fact that his antics after he did that yeah. was something else they took into consideration. We saw Draymond egging on the crowd. We saw him jumping up and down, taunting fans, boasting his chest, doing all of these things that was just for lack of better words, just immature, you know? So it wasn't just the stomping on the chest on why he got the suspension. It was everything else that led up to that addition, all of his behavior in the playoffs before that, and his antics that he did after that. Also, another thing, the Kings need, or excuse me, the Warriors need to stop enabling Draymond to be this beast that he is. I get it. They want him to play the villain, and that takes everything off of them. They can just go out and worry about they have to, and Draymond will be the dirty player, the villain. And I, I respect that to a certain extent. But also, guys, come on. You can't enable such foolish behavior that can ultimately lead to losing the series. And guess what, Matt? Ultimately lead to the demise of what we all know as this Warriors dynasty. Like I said, today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, whether it's a sporting event or a concert or a comedy show, a, a theater a show, whatever it may be. Game Time is the fast and easiest way for you to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, theater, whatever it is near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have. For example, on Saturday, uh, the uh, San Francisco Giants here at Oracle Park are hosting the New York Mets. I might go to that game. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to have the free time to go, but if I do go, I'm going to only know if I can go last minute. So the game time app is what I'm going to use to get tickets because I'm not going to find a better price for last minute tickets uh, anywhere. Instead of planning months in advance, game time has deals on tickets right up to the date of an, the event. They have exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem locked on NBA for $20 off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed 
maybe if it keeps happening over and over again against different teams in different circumstances, maybe maybe your guy is the problem. Yeah. Maybe the guy that is consistently at the center of everything, again, with different people and different organizations at different times, maybe that guy's the issue. Not everybody else, like, he, he, he makes it out to be. Also, shout out Kevon Looney, who uh, didn't get much yes. love from me on, on the Locked on Kings podcasts in the buildup to this uh, this series because I didn't think he could really hang with DeMontis Sabonis, and he's done a better job than I expected. But shout out Kevon Looney for... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It's funny. He basically took everything that the Warriors were... Or not. I, I keep saying the Warriors because the report is that people inside the Warriors organization are putting this out there or aren't happy, but I haven't heard it directly from the Warriors, so I'll just say the Warriors media. He basically silenced everything that they've been putting out about DeMontis Sabonis being a, a dirty player who uses the ball as a weapon, uses his elbows and grabs and kicks and oh, all man. this nonsense. Yeah. He basically... <laughs> Uh, put that all to bed by saying, "Oh, that's just what big men. I mean, that's just that's how big men play. That's, like, and that's and I I I like that. I welcome that. So, <laughs> shout out Kavon Looney for actually having a brain between his ears and right. recognizing. No, Sabonis is a physical player. I'm a physical player. This is the playoffs. This is what I expect. At least there's somebody in that room uh, that that has a a, a, a decent." IQ a moral at the compass. Moment. A moral compass, right? Because <laughs> everybody else, I'm not saying Steph Curry necessarily or anything like that, but <laughs> every, I'm not gonna let Clay off the hook for his justification. Yeah, we're just team. we're hearing just meltdowns. Like the golden, like the Golden State Warriors are melting down right now. Everybody around the Golden State Warriors is melting down right now, and it's the Sacramento Kings that caused it, which feels so good. It definitely does. It's, it's for this fan base who had a history of being screwed over by officials in the NBA playoffs. It's, you know, there's no better feeling than this because, as we as we know, the Kings are a small town. We're a small market, small town. Everyone wants to joke about the Cowtown and all this other stuff, which I love the fact that Kings fans have embraced the Cowbells. Um, Chase Center definitely has it. But, you know, the thing is, is I love the fact that Kings fans have embraced this, but Kings fans have had to deal with disrespect for so long. So to see that, for once, it's the Kings who are actually – handing down the disrespect to the other teams in the Golden State Warriors. When I say handing down the disrespect, I mean kicking their butts. It's not like the Kings are intentionally doing anything to disrespect the franchise. They're just kicking their butts. And Charles Barkley had such a phenomenal quote on uh, TNT last night. I actually retweet, I, I tweeted it. And he basically said the whole thing about this Draymond incident is taking away from the fact that the Kings are, quote, as uh, Charles Barkley said, kicking their ASS. And I think that's what it comes down to. The Warriors are going to try to use all of these distractions. Draymond Green getting suspended. The officials. All this stuff. You know what they're doing, Matt? They're using all these excuses to get away from the fact that the Kings are just kicking your ASS. And the fact of the matter is this is uncharted territory for this Warriors uh, dynasty. They haven't been down 0-2. Specifically to a team they were favored to win against in the series. And I better be very careful. I'm not sitting here talking like we know the series is over. The Kings are going to win. There's a lot of basketball to still be played in this series. A lot of basketball. Potentially, um, you know, as my math is off, uh, uh, six, uh, four more games, excuse me, five more games that could still be played in this series. So there's a lot of basketball that can uh, to be played. But the fact that the Warriors are having this meltdown, and Matt, you better pray to God the Kings don't win game three in Chase Center because, my God, we are going to see a meltdown we haven't seen since the Wicked Wish of the West melted in the Wizard of Oz. It's going to be random reference, but it's going to be awful. It is going to be awful. We're going to see a meltdown that nobody in this world has seen if the Kings win game three tomorrow night. Well, the Kings got the Warriors shook already because they're banning cowbells inside the, <laughs> the, the Chase Center, which I don't blame them for necessarily. But look, Kings fans, just download the Kings app. If you download the Kings app, there's literally a cowbell noisemaker on the Kings app. They're not going to take your phones away from you. So just bring those in or find a cowbell app or hell, just go to YouTube for cowbell noises and just play those while you're in the building. There's ways to get around that for sure. But look, to Kevin's point, the Kings win game three. Woo! I genuinely wonder what the Warriors look like in game four. Like, because at this point, we're like, here's where I think why Warrior fans are reacting the way they are. It's not just that they're not used to uh, the, the Warriors being in this position. It's that 
I think they're all seeing the writing on the wall. And this has very little to do with the Sacramento Kings and more to do with their situation. The dynasty is coming to an end, right? The, the Warriors dynasty, as we know it, is coming to an end. Steph Curry is still phenomenal, but he's 35 years old. Clay is like, what, 33, 34 years old, something yeah, like he's that. Slower. He's missing a few Draymond steps. Green might be on the way out, which I don't know if that's that bad of a thing for that team or not. <laughs> and meanwhile, you look at the depth on that bench, and they have young guys that are supposed to be good, but they haven't done anything in this series so far. Kaminga, nothing. Moody, nothing. Uh, even Dante DiVincenzo has done really nothing. The only three guys, Clay, Steph, and Wiggins, those are the only guys that are really contributing right now, and they're almost playing, or some of them are playing 40 minutes a night. So they can't keep that up for an entire playoffs. Their whole theme is strength in numbers. They don't have any strength in their numbers right now. Their numbers are three guys. And they just lost a fourth who the Sacramento Kings aren't afraid of. The Kings aren't saying, phew, thank God Draymond Green's not playing in game three. They're already kicking the Warriors' ass with Draymond Green in the game. Now the Warriors are really screwed because if the Kings get Kevon Looney in foul trouble, the Warriors have nobody to play on DeMontis Sabonis or Alex Lynn or anyone, period, because they don't have a backup center, which is their own damn fault. So I genuinely wonder, if the Kings win game three, take advantage of Draymond being out, and the Kings, I don't think they're favored right now, but they, if that might change now that we know that uh, Draymond's suspended as we get closer to game time. I have no idea. But if the Kings win game three, and remember, defensively, they played better on the road this season than they did uh, at, at home. If they win game three, I genuinely wonder if the Golden State Warriors come into game four and basically roll over and die. And I don't mean not try and not play, but the it's, writing's on the wall. Like, here's here's a sweep right off into the sunset. Your time is over. I think the thing is this. The Warriors are competitors. And, you know, before I get to what they would do in game four, had if the Kings win game three, let's go back to them being down 0-2. Matt, you made a good point, and this was maybe a week ago. And you said... The thing about the Golden State Warriors versus the Kings when it comes to playoff experience, the one benefit, if the Kings were down 0-2 right now, if I were a Kings fan, I would be scared to death. Terrified, yes. Absolutely terrified. 0-2 to the defending champions. Uh, you guys haven't been in the playoffs in 60. You don't have the experience. You don't have. The, you would be freaking out if I were a, King, a hardcore Kings fan because I'm like, this series is over. The only thing that I give the Golden State Warriors is is that even though they're down 0-2 and, and we're starting to see them freak out like we've talked about, I still think when you look at the pulse of that team, they know, okay, we're down 0-2. We've been down 3-1 to in the Western Conference Finals before and we came back. So I think because they've had that experience, they've been on the magnitude of the stage before, I still think there's something in me right now that's telling me that they're still not flinching at this point in time. Yeah, they've been punched a few times. They've been punched a couple of times. But I still don't think they're flinching at this point in time, meaning that they realize they still have the championship pedigree, culture, and intangibles and experience in order to come back from an 0-2 deficit. So I do still think that they're coming into Game 3 with the confidence. If they lose Game 3, Matt, then you can throw all that out the window. Yes, I get they've won everything. They've, they've, they've been a great dynasty squad. If they go down three to zero, at this point, no no team in NBA history has ever come back from three zero and one. It's never happened. It's happened in the MLB playoffs, and I think it's happened once in the NHL. Don't quote me on that. But in the NBA playoffs, never, never out of how many a hundred and sixty eight series or something like that. Don't quote me on that either. But something massive. No team has ever come back from a three zero deficit. So. Can the Warriors be the first team to do it? Potentially. But kind of like that documentary uh, Last Dance for the Chicago Bulls, you kind of wonder, is this the Warriors' true last dance? Draymond wants to go to L.A. to play with his buddy LeBron. Um, you look at contracts with some of the other guys, and when you look you look at this team, over, was it just three years ago they drafted Wiseman second overall? He's in, um, what, Detroit now? What a bust. You know, and then you look at Kaminga last year, who they took um, – or was it Moody last year? I'm, I'm getting it all confused. But you look at their top picks, their lottery picks over the last few years. I'm like, Matt, what have they done to develop these guys and get them ready? Because they lucked out having a second overall pick three years ago in Wiseman, and that didn't work out. And being able to take Kaminga early and I think sixth overall, whatever it was, in Moody. Like, they were able to really get some benefits with the draft, but I haven't seen what they've done to truly develop 
these younger players. Kamiga's had flashes of greatness throughout the season. And honestly, Matt, I thought Kamiga would be their X factor in this series. The guy that you may not think is going to come off and give you mad production, but is. He's, him and freaking Moody have been disappearing acts. So when you look at the makeup of the, this roster, yes, outside of their core, what do they have? And, and and would they be able to make a run after this year with what they have left on the roster? My answer to that, Matt, I think no. I think this is one last dance. So they better throw on them dancing shoes, those Stacey Adams, and pull out everything they got for game three. Because if they lose game three, my goodness, it is literally the beginning of the end for this team as we know it. Yeah, Kaminga hasn't been good. Moody hasn't been good. GP2 hasn't been good, although I think he's really playing hurt. Jordan Poole also sounds like he's playing hurt. Has been a complete non-factor. Like, the Warriors just are not getting enough out of their group. Meanwhile, the Sacramento Kings second unit, their bench unit, led by Malik Monk, has bailed out the starters at times with how poorly the Kings have shot out of the gate, which is why I think the Warriors should be scared of the Sacramento Kings, should be losing their composure a little bit because they're down 0-2 to an offensive team that has not nearly played at the level that they're capable of that they showed consistently during the regular season. So game three, going to be very, very interesting. Looking forward to it tomorrow night. Of course, Kevin and myself uh, will be there covering it for it for ABC 10. Uh, and of course, we'll have a uh, post-game uh, Locked on Kings podcast after that. So uh, final predictions, Kevin. Do you actually think the Kings are going to win game three? Do you think the Warriors are going to bounce back? Like, how you feel on going into game three vibes? Granted, we're still 24 hours away. A lot could change based off what we've seen over the last 24. Well, Matt, so far when it's come to my predictions in this series, I've been terrible. So predict the Warriors atrocious. to win. Predict, predict so, the Warriors to win then. I honestly, honestly, even if my predictions have not been bad, I honestly think the Warriors are going to go up. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the, King, the Warriors are going to win. The Kings will still be up 2-1. But I think the Warriors are going to win. They have to protect home court. Yep. They're down 0-2. They have every incentive, every reason to go out there and win game three, Matt. So I think the Warriors are winning. What about you? Well, you would love to see the Kings take advantage of Dre not being there. And like I said, the way to do that is to get Kevon Looney in foul trouble. If they do that, the Kings are winning this game. Um, but I, I too, would, could uh, definitely see the Warriors, who have been amazing at home this season, bounce back and, and figure things out a little bit, considering they've been in both games that they've lost in Sacramento, too. Reality is, the goal for the Kings is just get one of these two. Get one of these two, go back for Game 5 in Sacramento, and have a chance to put the nail in the coffin. So that is the goal, but if the Kings win Game 3, I don't think they're going to have to worry about a Game 5. Let's put it that way. So, you know, I will predict the Golden State Warriors winning Game. You know what? No, I'm, I'm, I'm switching it up because Draymond Green's not playing. I think that's really going to be an issue for the Warriors. He hasn't been great for the Warriors. He did have, I think, 13 assists in game one. But defensively, I think he makes a big deal for the Warriors and how they stopped him on the Sabonis. So I think the Kings are going to get Kevon Looney into foul trouble and having no backup big is going to be the death of them without dominant Sabonis. So you know what? I'm picking the Kings to win game three uh, and then look to uh, pull out a sweep on Sunday. That was my next question to you. If you had the Kings winning game three, you had them sweeping on Sunday. I have them sweeping on Sunday if they win game three. Wow, that would be one of the best stories in the NBA playoffs. I I, I say the Kings lose game. Well, obviously there's going to be a game five regardless if the Kings lose um, tomorrow night. But if the Warriors do win tomorrow night, Matt, I say this is going at least six games. Okay. If the Warriors win tomorrow night, it's at least going six games. And who wins at the end of the six games? I still think we'll be the Kings, but if the Warriors pull a backdoor sweep, I can't say I would be shocked, but I think that's unlikely. All right, enough of that negativity and enough of that nonsense over there. Today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast is also brought to you by Prize Picks, the number one way to play daily fantasy sports. The way Prize Picks works, you pick two to six players in the over or the under on their prize pick scoring projection. So going into game three tomorrow, let's say uh, De'Aaron Fox is projected to score uh, 28 and a half points. You pick the over or the under of that while also picking the over or the other under on Steph Curry's 31 and a half points and the over and the under on DeMontis Sabonis' uh, 19 and a half points. Well, if you get all three right, you can win up to 25 times your money. Again, you pick two to six players on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections. So you don't have to worry about those sharks on out there that uh, make a living beating you at something that's just supposed to be fun and a hobby. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. Get this, not just for the NBA, but the NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and 
more entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They offer safe and fast withdrawals, currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the PrizePix app, go to prizepix.com and sign up to play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100. So use promo code locked on. You get $100 if you deposit $100. You get $50 if you deposit $50. It's free money for you to make money on PrizePix, the number one way to play daily fantasy sports. Hope you enjoyed riding in the car with Kevin and myself for a while. If you want to weigh in on all of the chaos going and all the discussion uh, around this Kings and Warriors series, feel free to weigh in. Warriors fans, if I offended you, some of you I know are excellent. I would say maybe the majority of you are excellent sports fans who are just uh, frustrated that your team's down 0-2. I understand that. Uh, you need to check some of your fans on social media that are quickly turning into the literally whiniest fan base that I've ever interacted with, ever. And you know I'm not afraid to call out Sacramento Kings fans too when it comes to stuff like this, but the 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 whiness and entitlement of Golden State Warriors fans on social media has been unbelievable. And I know that's not necessarily a fully accurate representation of the Golden State Warriors fan base as a whole, but those are the people that I've been interacting with saying the stupidest and most absurd things when it comes to DeMontis Sabonis being the dirtiest player in the league or Draymond Green never stomped on Sabonis or it wasn't a stomp. He was just trying to foot, put his foot down somewhere or there's a conspiracy for the NBA to want the Kings to move on over the Golden State Warriors. Just absolutely dumb stuff. So if you're one of those people that says stuff like that, I hope you'll stick around to Locked on Kings. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't for based uh, based off of the strong opinion that I have about your takes. But I'm just saying it's not even remotely accurate and it's beyond foolish. We'll see how the Kings and Warriors perform tomorrow. Again, like I said, I'm going to be doing a post-game pod after that game, of course, from the Chase Center. So I hope you'll join me for that. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to Locked on Kings part of the Locked On Podcast Network.